Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, I cannot be physically with you this evening at UCD, but I am with you in spirit. And I wish to thank PJ Rudden for the invitation, and I commend the choice of topic for this evening's event. As you know, I am beginning my mandate as European Commissioner for Agriculture. Tackling the future challenges of food production in Europe is very central to my work. So European agriculture is currently subject to multiple challenges that emanate from various social, economic and environmental drivers. To feed a future population of 9 billion in 2050, the Food and Agricultural Organization estimates that world agricultural production will have to exceed its 2005 to 2007 level by 60%. The pressure from the rise in global food demand is expected to be accompanied by rising public expectations in the EU, in the EU for safety, quality, value, traceability and diversity of food. So these developments are projected to have major implications for EU agriculture, which continues to be one of the largest suppliers of global agricultural markets. As you know, in recent decades, agriculture has experienced good yield growth. However, this trend has slowed down in developed countries and is projected to remain below past performance for the foreseeable future. These gains were achieved partly by putting serious strains on natural resources and the environment, which have already significantly deteriorated in recent decades. So it leads to a whole range of environmental challenges, such as improved resource efficiency for water, energy, fertilisers and pesticides, the use of renewable energy sources, mitigation of soil depletion, loss of wildlife habitats and biodiversity, and a reduction of waste. Of course, one of the key resources that will be required is an abundance of good quality water. And as you know, this is a subject very close to my heart. These challenges are further exacerbated by climate change. Agriculture still accounts for 9% of the Union's greenhouse gas emissions. These developments are putting the long-term production potential of our agricultural sector at risk. Agricultural production in Europe goes hand in hand with local and regional lifestyles that are built around traditional and quality products. After all, maintaining agriculture as a viable activity throughout the EU not only contributes to food production and growth and employment in rural areas, but to the maintenance of Europe's cultural and culinary diversity. This paves the way for further economic activities like tourism. So in summary, the challenge that faces the EU agriculture is to increase productivity. It is based on a finite resource, which is land, so we need to do more with less. And all the while we need to ma remain a competitive, viable sector that maintains our rural livelihoods. All of this has to be achieved in the context of more limited public support in the wake of the financial crisis and the growing social pressure to justify maintaining such a large share of the EU budget for, this, for the common agricultural policy. So the question is, how do we meet these challenges? In order to promote agricultural competitiveness, the EU will continue with the trend set by past reforms to enhance the market orientation of the CIP. In the context of the increase in global food demand, the time of production restraints is reaching its natural conclusion. The current restrictions to production of sugar will end in 2017, and as you know, milk quotas will be abolished next spring. In the coming months, I will be keeping a close eye on rural development programmes. With a view to job creation, I will focus on sufficient funding for investments, business startups, and local development in rural areas. In the current international context, with growing world food demand, the European Commission will continue to work on opening new markets and making the most of the new opportunities at global level. This is a central priority of my mandate as Agriculture Commissioner. In fact, we currently have a very positive trade balance in Europe. In the last five years, the EU agri-food sector increased the value of its exports by 70%, which is faster than the overall EU exports. As we have seen in Ireland, our recovery has been driven by exports, particularly in the agri-food sector. In 2013 alone, 61,000 new jobs were created in Ireland, and agriculture, forestry and fisheries contributed 30% of those jobs. The current evolution of trade flows after the Russian embargo clearly confirms the capacity of the European Union to adapt to the new geopolitical context 
and the necessity to find alternative markets for our product. The new EU research programme known as Horizon 2020 will play a key role in promoting agricultural research and innovation for to allow the farm sector to adapt to new trends and to become more resource efficient. In fact, we have doubled the funding for the agri-food research with a new budget of €3.85 billion, which is a positive outcome for the agri-food sector. In addition, we are putting in place the new European Innovation Partnership on Agricultural Productivity and Sustainability. This is a new instrument designed to speed up the transfer of relevant research results into practice. The fact that agricultural research and innovation on the horizon 2020 are now closely coordinated with the CAP is a golden opportunity to bolster innovative actions at local level, resulting in a more knowledge-based EU agriculture and forestry sector. In addition, the farm advisory system helps farmers to better meet the EU rules for the environment, public and animal health and welfare. Farmers may also receive financial support for this advice under the Rural Development Policy. So, ladies and gentlemen, 2015 will be a turning point for the EU dairy sector because of the end of milk quotas. EU operators will be better placed to compete on an equal footing on the global marketplace. Medium-term prospects for milk and dairy commodities are favourable, driven by a steady growing world demand. World imports are expected to increase by around 2% a year. But the main driver is a change in consumption patterns towards higher dairy protein intake, linked to the increase in the number of urban middle-class households worldwide. The main challenge for the sector will be market volatility. Even if we remain optimistic in the long run, there might be episodes of oversupply, as we are experiencing these days, and consequently price pressure. But the EU dairy sector is and will continue to be competitive in the global markets, especially as regards cheese, skim milk powder and whey powder. So it's my priority to ensure that this continues to be the case. I have set out how Europe's common agricultural policy will continue to support the sector to enhance its social, economic and environmental sustainability. I strongly believe the European agricultural sector is working hard to face the immense challenges of the 21st century. And from my own experience in Ireland, I know how important agriculture is for our society, how important it is to provide sustainable jobs in rural areas, for investment for the future and producing food to feed the world. I want to conclude by thanking PJ Rudden once again for the invitation to speak to the UCD Engineering Graduates Association Autumn Panel Discussion and I wish you a successful and productive evening. I'm sorry I cannot be with you, but I look forward to hearing the result of your deliberations. Thank you very much.